Hello everyone and welcome to this next installment of Stockfish's opening repertoire. We are focusing today on 1d4 d5. So let's have a look at it. 1d4 d5. Now of course uh, Stockfish's uh, main move as black is 1d4 knight f6 but if you force it to play d5 this is the main line that it plays and it's a little bit of a surprise to me. So c4 e6 knight c3 and then c6. Mr. Beads will be jumping up with joy because it's a semi-slav, that's right. And through quite a risky move order, the triangle semi-slav. Um, now, often played by black players um, in order to avoid the Botvinnik system, uh, actually. The idea is that you can meet knight f3 with d takes c4 without having to allow the sharp knight f6, bishop g5. Um, obviously, Stockfish isn't uh, particularly scared of that. It just thinks that this is a... Uh, the best move order. So um, there are quite a few um, interesting things there. Um, there's e4 that we'll have a look at um, and knight f3 as well. And actually knight f3 is uh, Stockfish's main choice. Now knight f6, not d takes c4, which is the, the notabome. Um, and now e3. Yes, the semi-slav. Um, it plays uh, 5 e3, not the sharpest bishop g5 lines, which have... Uh, well, really always chosen by the uh, by the engines. And then uh, knight bd7, queen c2. Funnily enough, um, I mean, Alpha Zero played um, a couple of queen c2 uh, semi-slavs against Stockfish 8. But uh, in actual fact, the main line was always uh, 5, bishop g5. I mean, what we did see with the other engines was that from time to time, you know, when they got semi-slavs through different move orders, queen c2 was popping up, you know, but just bishop g5 was the main one. With uh, Stockfish, it's pretty clear it's uh, it's Queen C2. So pretty interesting. Um, Bishop D6, Bishop D3 now, and then um, Stockfish, through different move orders, looks at different ideas. Um, castles is one idea. And now we get this uh, quite forcing line that's been seen quite a bit in um, uh, elite play. C takes D5, takes E4, takes, takes, takes h6, we were threatening h7, bishop e3 takes, bishop h7 check, always move the king into the corner, um, just leaves it further away in an ending, and bishop f5, queen a5, takes, takes, queen b3, queen d5, queen d1, threatening something like bishop f6, queen f5, rook e1, and uh, you know, we're already, uh, uh, we're still following uh, opening theory, this is uh, uh, a correspondence game and actually uh, this move queen d1 this is where we left um, uh, over the board play rook fd1 was played by Bruzon Batista against Ray Robson in 2013. So after rook e1 rook d8 queen b3 queen d5 rook e3 that's the idea takes takes b6 takes takes g3 um, Stockfish gives White a 0.17 advantage Probably, indeed, it's not, you know, that much at all. Um, but um, in potential, it could be quite nasty, I think, for black. You know, you've got to play uh, quite carefully with, um, you know, the potential for a white knight to come to f5, these pawns to become weak, maybe the black rooks to become passive. You know, it's not absolutely trivial. So it's actually quite a quite a promising line. I mean, I wouldn't uh, mind getting a line like this, you know, as best line out of my opening. Um, yeah, still quite a few uh, opportunities there to... Uh, to achieve something, although it obviously should be drawn. Um, but that was uh, bishop d3 castles. And then another line that uh, um, Stockfish looked at was takes, takes, and then a6, which um, I saw somewhere else. Was it Covisto that, um, that, um, uh, that had this as its main line? Quite possibly. And uh, it's a very flexible move. I mean, um, you're preparing uh, b5 and c5 in principle. Um, you could just play c5 without. I mean, it's a useful move, a6, to cover stuff. Uh, you could also just play e5. And you're just kind of waiting to see what white does. Um, so a4 is uh, Stockfish's main move, just preventing b5. Now you play c5. And in fact, you've managed to play c5, but included those moves a6, a4, which is generally useful for black. I mean, it covers the b5 square, keeps this bishop on d6 safe. Rook d1 takes takes, queen c7, queen e2, b6 slightly odd uh, IQP for black with this uh, bishop on d6 and um, well you know the control over d5 that you normally have is uh, still waiting you know you'll just get it when you play bishop b7 so you know white takes the opportunity to go d5 knight e5 takes takes 
and Bishop G5. I mean, this is where we leave uh, correspondence. This is uh, Stockfish's novelty. And um, after Bishop C3, we go D6, Queen C6, F3. And uh, well, as you can see, I mean, um, white's going to have the two bishops. Black's going to get this C3 pawn. It's quite an unclear position. Um, I don't think black's, you know, particularly worse in this position. But, um, you know, the B6 pawn is weak. The king side could be a target. Things can happen quickly, you know, with bishop E5 takes F6 and then an attack there. So, um, yeah, I mean, I think uh, quite a challenging position. Uh, Stockfish gives 0.45 for white, you know, so uh, uh, a slight advantage. It's um, so I think definitely, you know, in this queen C2 line, there seem to be uh, um, opportunities for um, uh, for white to, to discover new stuff. And I found that very, very striking that, uh, you know, Stockfish preferred this uh, queen c2 um, um, Moran above um, uh, above the, uh, the bishop g5 semi-slav. So, but bishop g5, we still want to know what happens there. What happens there? Well, um, if we look at the Botvinnik system um, with d takes c4, then uh, Stockfish is with Komodo Dragon on this one. They just go for this line with bishop e7. And uh, yeah, I mean, we just saw that this was uh, just good enough for um, uh, for black. Takes, takes, queen f6, bishop b7, knight e4. I think we had bishop g2, knight a6 in uh, Komodo's line. Uh, but maybe it transposes. Castles, castles, h4. Um, and now c5, rook takes d4, all very well known. Rook c1, bishop d5. And this was a game, uh, Malcolm Young against uh, Shankland, Batumi 2018. White went uh, rook fd1, and uh, here uh, Stockfish wants to go rook fe1, rook d8, knight g5. But still, you know, I mean, um, uh, it's, you know, pretty unclear, of course, but black's clearly pretty active, you know, and uh, with this pass b pawn, a uh, great little square on uh, d4 with the knight, active rooks. Um, yeah, you're not surprised that, um, that black's doing okay here. 0 0.46 for, uh, for white according to Stockfish. So a slight advantage, but, um, you know, with some good preparation, shouldn't be uh, too terrible for black. So that's, um, you know, the, uh, the Botvinnik system. And it's, yeah, I mean, it's quite a, quite a, a, a change of, uh, of, of all of the books that have come out, uh, you know, recently. I mean, Bishop E7 seems to be a really promising line. You don't have to go for all those wild complications with Knight BD7. So, but after bishop g5, actually h6 is the preferred move. Actually, of all the engines, they all want to play this Moscow. And uh, again, another big surprise now from um, uh, from Stockfish because uh, most of the engines want to play bishop h4. That's what Alpha Zero wanted to do as well, going into the anti-Moscow gambit. Um, but uh, Stockfish just wants to take on f6 and play this uh, quieter line and uh, plays it very, you know, very simply really. Uh, bishop e7. Again, uh, Stockfish goes for this line with queen d8 and bishop e7, pretty uh, restrained. Um, there are plenty of lines where black plays uh, g6 as well. Um, but bishop e7 and then rook b1. That's uh, Stockfish's main line after 600,000 million nodes of thinking. Just going for a minority attack, you know, so castles b4. And um, well, actually, uh, this variation ends up as 0.00. .00. Um, after a, um, a sort of forcing exchange, obviously not forced for um, um, for uh, uh, for White to go for this, but um, this is how the uh, the variation engine ends with a draw by the petrol. Um, quite a nice plan from White, to be honest. I mean, uh, I, I do uh, you know certainly in human play, I think that this uh, would have a kind of a promising feel, you know, with all those threats around e6 and uh, no uh, machine on the other side of the board calculating it to uh, to make sure there's no problem. You know, could be quite uh, quite interesting. I quite like this uh, approach of uh, of Stockfish. Um, I mean, what about the anti-Moscow gambit then? What about Bishop H4? What does uh, uh, Stockfish think of that. Actually, it uh, assesses it about the same as uh, bishop takes f6. That's 0 0.00. Um, this is Stockfish's main line. Uh, bishop e2, castles, knight e5. And then it plays this line, bishop d6. You re might remember that uh, certainly uh, if you've got the silicon road to chess improvement, there was masses and masses of uh, analysis of, um, of how alpha zero does this. Alpha zero always plays h4 um, just to attack the, the king side in this way. Uh, Stockfish goes for bishop d6, a6, bishop h5, e5, and then this gorgeous move, f4. We're still very much in theory. This is, uh, we're following Agrest against uh, Kulaut Turin uh, 2006. g takes f4, d takes 
uh, e5. And here, um, yeah, this was the game uh, Agres Kulas. I haven't actually checked it, so I can't uh, actually tell you whether this is 100% uh, correct. Looks very dangerous, though. But uh, I think you could guess that, too. Rook d1 is a lovely move here, threatening uh, queen f5 checkmate, you know, stopping the king from uh, escaping to the queen side. And, uh, well, this turned out to be... Uh, very very good for white as you can imagine um i don't know uh yeah i'd have to check whether it's completely was completely correct but uh looks very very dangerous um so what uh, stockfish wants is knight takes e5 and after rook f4 rook f8 rook f5 queen b6 and castles you know black is just hanging in there just but still you know it's unbelievably dangerous and the tactics just continue we've got this discovered attack on the queen f5 counterattacking the queen queen g7 which looks just horrific if queen's attack the rook's attack here but uh, c takes b5 check rook d8 check king b8 and black's got this typical semi-slav uh, uh, sort of uh, compensation a pawn down but uh, a, a big light squared bishop white's got a, a short-legged uh, white uh, knight and uh, a big queenside pawn majority you know the position's about equal and um well i mean i'd rather be black to be honest in uh, in this position but uh, yeah we, obviously with a bit of good uh, preparation you can uh, work out you know the way to draw with uh, with white here um very very dangerous but um looks like black is doing pretty well so that is um, uh, the main line for uh, for Stockfish, all based around uh, uh, the triangle semi-slav, which is, you know, pretty interesting, really. Um, what else do we have? What am I going to move on to? Well, um, we've got a couple of lines that occur just a little bit earlier on there, because um, after c6, we can also uh, play a couple of uh, interesting ideas here. I mean, after knight f3, uh, black can play d takes c4, which is a notabone, which is, uh, um, well, I, I find it a very scary uh, opening as white. Um, actually, um, uh, the engines are pretty much uh, uh, unanimous about the type of setup that they want against it. Um, so b takes c4, knight f6, bishop d3, castles, castles knight d7 and then knight d2 and really the idea is to play knight d2 and bishop c2 and you cover e4 you cover the c4 pawn with the knight and this bishop stops the, the pawns from advancing and then gradually you're going to aim to advance these pawns uh, it's a great plan um, but uh, yeah black does seem to have counterplay but yeah i mean these are quite hard positions to handle for black also for white you know so uh um but um yeah well worth um i mean great fun to uh, to analyze and to play so knight c5 bishop c2 knight e4 this was uh, stockfish's idea um queen c7 rook c1 rook c8 bishop b3 queen d8 e4 h6 which you know to be honest i quite like uh, the look of um, of white's position um we're following a, a correspondence game here i mean the only problem really is you know how do you make progress these pawns are quite good but any more um, advances and you'll create holes in there um, queen d1 was uh, was stockfish's idea bishop c6 king h1 bishop e8 c5 queen e7 bishop a4 and now you know the uh, black starts trying to break up uh, the uh, the white position you've got a great past c pawn but these past a and b pawns are still there um, ends as 0.27 for white um, you know very very unclear I mean of course it's one of those positions that if you do put some uh, some hard work into it and uh, study it and the opponent is unaware of it then you're you know you're going to score masses of points here but um, but definitely this idea in the notabome knight d2 and bishop c2 this seems to be the way to uh, to play so yeah I'd say uh, yeah give it a go the other interesting thing is, uh, I mean, the reason why this triangle semi-slav has got a, a very risky reputation is because of the martial gambit. Um, takes, takes, bishop b4, and now uh, knight c3 has been played, um, but bishop d2 is the sharp line. Takes, takes, queen takes e4. Um, but, you know, all of the engines, or rather none of the engines, are impressed with this. Um, and all of them want to play this move knight e2. And they just head for the same forced line. Um, you may have seen this one before. Uh, knight b4, we go queen d6, check, knight f5. Lots of stuff hanging, but we end up in a, a slightly better endgame for white. I mean, slightly better pawn structure, but really no big problems there. And uh, there have been a lot of draws in uh, in these positions, you know, just uh, um, really not too, um, uh, not too worrying for black. 
But that is really seen as um, uh, White's best line. Stockfish, um, uh, Stockfish's best line for Bish B2, which is normally, you know, has always been seen to be the most dangerous, is Knight A6. And now Alpha Zero was always playing Bish Bay 5. I think Komodo Dragon also went for Bish Bay 5 in the end. Um, it must be said, Alpha Zero didn't uh, make uh, any sort of score against um, Stockfish 8. I think most of the games were drawn. They look very fraught for both sides, but um, always end up in a draw. Uh, Stockfish goes for bishop d6 and sacks this second pawn. And this is quite well-known theory. Um, it's the sort of theory that you really don't want to forget when, uh, <laughs> when, you're, um, uh, when you come across it at the board. But if you remember it, then you should be okay. Um, as you can see, very, very complicated positions. And uh, you know, Black's position is hanging on a knife edge here, king caught in the center. We just need to get some pieces towards the king and we're there. But somehow with some, uh, some good play, some moves like this, putting the queen in the way of the, uh, of the rook on d1, you know, um, the engines managed to hold it. Um, very, very complicated, this one. But um, yeah, if, you're, uh, um, if you've got a very good memory and uh, you're, you've got no fear, then uh, you know you can uh, hold something like this, but pretty complicated positions. But ends as zero dot zero zero. So that is the um, um, is the semi Slav, um, as seen by uh, Stockfish. That's Stockfish's main line again with one d five with the triangle variation. We're going to stop there, and then in the next video we're going to round off the rest of one d four d five. See you then.